If you ask the world its formula for peace, it will blurt out, prepare for war. If you ask heaven, the queen herself replies as she did at Fatima 105 years ago today. If people do what I tell you, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. On May 5th, 1917, Pope Benedict XV called for a world crusade of prayer to end the war. Eight days later, on the octave of that noble prayer, Our Lady blessed that crusade. As the noon bells of the Regina Celi resounded over the hills of Portugal, the Queen of Heaven announced her message of peace at Fatima. Meanwhile, on that same day, as the noon bells of the Regina Celi resounded over the hills of Rome, Pope Benedict XV was consecrating a new prince of the church, a bishop, at the Sistine Chapel, one whose surname, Pacelli, meant peace. He was born Eugenio Maria Joseph Pacelli and went on to become Pope Pius XII. Isn't it wonderful that at the same time as the three shepherd children were grazing their sheep, Pius XII received his staff of the pastoral office as Bishop Pacelli? And just like the first apparition began with a storm and ended with a message of peace, so also the reign of Pius XII began with the storm of World War II, followed by a decade and a half of peace. To demonstrate how remarkable his reign of peace was, consider this. After his death, when John XXIII called his robber council, prelates in the Roman Curia were shocked. When an ecumenical council is usually called, it's for the purpose of dealing with something afflicting the universal church. Maybe there's a new heresy shooting out its roots or there's some devastating error that requires uh, censure. Why would you call a council during a time of peace? Especially, and this is important, especially when the Vatican Council of 1870 was never ended but prorogued, meaning it was and still is technically still in session, making it the duty of a future Pope to continue where it left off, either he will announce it to be finally closed or they'll continue their deliberations. Now, of course, that's a topic for another podcast, perhaps a series, but you can see that even in his time, the reign of Pius XII was marked by a peace that was not of this world. However, he was the first to admit that all was not well during his pontificate, and having read the third secret of Fatima, he knew what would befall the church upon his demise, which is why he confided to a cardinal at the time, saying, famously, after me comes the deluge. All right, back to Fatima, where Our Lady told the three shepherd children, if people do what I tell you, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. So what did she tell them? You can summarize it in these three words, prayer, penance, then peace. It's the same message that St. Michael had delivered to the three children when he appeared to them three times the previous year as the angel of peace to prepare them for Our Lady's coming. In his first apparition, he taught them a prayer. In the second, he admonished them to make reparation for the conversion of sinners. In the third, he offered them Holy Communion, leaving them with an inexplicable peace that lasted several days. The reason we made the connection between Fatima and Pope Pius XII at the start of this video, is to present you with a portrait of this beloved Pope on these same three facets of Fatima. Let's begin with prayer. Ever since his ordination, no matter how busy he got as Monsignor or Nuncio or Secretary of State or Vicar of Christ, he kept up the practice of spending an hour in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. Here's an anecdote from when he attended the 32nd International Eucharistic Conference in Argentina as Pius XI's papal legate. A unique movable platform on wheels was used to carry the Blessed Sacrament in the immense monstrance. In his vestments and cope, Cardinal Pacelli, with his eyes closed and his hands joined in prayer, knelt for two hours on the platform, which was drawn past the great throngs by seminarians. Those who saw him were moved by the simple piety and faith of this great man. It was profound faith, lacking all ostentation. He was more pilgrim than churchman. It is said that later, when pictures taken of the Congress and particularly of the procession were being shown to the Pope, Cardinal Pacelli exclaimed, My, what a magnificent sight! I didn't see that. The Pope, with his knowing eyes and smile, turned to him and said, Eminence, that was your fault. 
As cardinal, his sermons usually fell into three logical divisions, which then came to be known as Cardinal Pacelli's Triple Invitation, Orate Fratres, Amate Fratres, Vigilate Fratres, an invitation to pray as brothers, to love as brothers, and to watch as brothers, to watch lest the seeds of communism or any other anti-Christianism divide and conquer not only the people of France but the whole world. Next, penance or reparation for sinners. We once again read an excerpt from the life of Pope Pius XII. A small fact has come out of the wealth of stories relative to the sanctity of Cardinal Pacelli as demonstrated not only in the Vatican where he was called Il Santo but directly from Buenos Aires. During the Congress, he was assigned a whole government building and every care was taken to see that every comfort was afforded him. The male servants who had charge of his apartment noticed that each morning the great mattress was pushed to one side of the bed and a thin woolen blanket spread over the hard springs. Naturally, they wanted to know if the mattress was not suitable. Blushing a great deal, the cardinal was embarrassed to learn that his secret had been found out. He had pushed the mattress aside so that he might do penance by sleeping on the springs. He not only preached mortification, he practiced it. Of course, such acts of penance for a supernatural cause win souls to heaven. The head rabbi of Rome who became a Catholic and took the name Eugenio after Pope Pius XII said he was converted because he was so inspired by the example of Pope Pius XII. And lastly, peace. From the first moment of his pontificate, Pius XII dedicated himself to peace. In the centre of his coat of arms, which he himself designed, stands a white dove bearing an olive branch in its beak. His motto is, Peace, the work of justice. As a boy, he had played in the piazza of Rome's Santa Maria della Pace and the words engraved on its walls, Opus Justitiae Pax, Peace is the work of justice, were indelibly printed on his soul so that he was even able to adopt them as his personal motto. True to his name, Pope Pius XII was, as said by Father Benedict Hughes, truly the Pope of Peace and constantly sought to bring a just end to the war and a lasting peace to the world. He wrote 41 encyclicals, more than his predecessors of the previous 50 years combined. Lest you get the wrong idea of Pius XII being a lily-livered son of the church who wouldn't swat a fly, you should read about his many diplomatic wranglings, particularly the many concordats he wrote with nations, asserting the rights of the church and her flock in the face of the sleepless enemy, be it fascism, Nazism or communism. His courage and zeal shone through even as a teenager. A directive was sent out from the Minister of Education to the effect that all high students on a particular occasion should write a composition setting forth the benefits accruing to Italy from the seizure of the Papal States. He not only denounced the suggestion of such a composition as a subtle attempt to justify a great injustice, but wrote a composition denouncing the seizure of the Papal States and condemning the anti-clerical groups for their persecution of the Church. Remember now that this was done by a young lad who faced possible expulsion for such a stand. But no matter what the consequences, right was right to Eugenio. He had thus learned at his early age to defend the defenseless and to refuse to evade for fear of reprisals. So there you have the threefold mission of Fatima mirrored in the life and mission of Pius XII, the Pope of Peace. As if in reward of his threefold mission as Apostle of Peace, Pius XII was privileged to witness a repeat of the miracle of the sun in the Vatican Gardens, something like four times in the year 1950. And in the perfect closing act, he was buried on the anniversary of that legendary miracle on October 13, 1958. Today, as we remember the Fatima message and the Pope most mystically linked with it, let us each make the threefold Fatima pledge to be more prayerful, penitent and peaceful.